This is the iconic Macintosh Plus, Apple's 1986 masterpiece that introduced much of the world to the concept of point and click computing. But this particular Mac Plus is suffering from a fault that's relegated many of these to an unfortunate fate in an e-waste pile. Hello? But I think we can save this poor little guy. And if you find a Mac Plus in the same state as this one, I think you can save it too. So stay tuned. And if you think that this whole computer, mouse, and graphical user interface thing is gonna catch on one day, I hope you'll consider subscribing to the channel. I picked up this Mac Plus from a very nice local gentleman who actually bought it brand new. And he knew a bit about computers too, so he had an inkling of what might be going on inside this thing. And it's something that I've seen before. An incredibly common problem that we can actually blame entirely on Steve Jobs. You see, Mr. Jobs had this vision for a friendly, silent computer that anyone could just pick up and use. Hello, computer. And I'm thankful for the friendly part, but it's the silent part that I take issue with because this Mac Plus has no fan, just hot computer chips silently baking the inside of this machine until inevitably solder joints begin to crack. But fortunately, it's usually the same small group of solder joints that go and they're very easy to access. And even if you've never soldered anything before in your life, I'm confident that you could handle this. So we're gonna take this thing apart. I'll show you the joints that tend to crack and it should be a totally normal repair. New merch is up at shop.actionretro.com. So this overheating issue was pretty notorious even back when the Mac Plus was new. So much so that you could buy one of these things, a Kensington System Saver, which is basically just a fan that goes on the top of the Mac Plus and sucks the hot air out. Unfortunately, uh, this Kensington System Saver did not save this Mac and we're going to have to disassemble it. And disassembly is actually pretty straightforward. The only gotcha is that there's screws up underneath this handle. So you're going to need a long Torx T15 screwdriver to reach them. Uh, this one I found on Amazon is actually the perfect size to get up under that handle. I will link this down in the description. So we've got two T15 screws at the bottom here. One T15 that's normally covered by the battery compartment cover. And then two way back under the handle here. And unlike Apple of today, fortunately all the screws are exactly the same size. And now with some gentle persuasion, this should come apart into two halves. Uh -huh. So the most common solder joint failure is actually hiding under this plastic shield here, which is double-sided taped on with what is now very disgusting deteriorated double-sided tape. So we're just gonna peel that right off. And do note that this is the high voltage board, so this can be dangerous. Do not do this while it is plugged in. And uh, yeah, make sure that if the CRT does work and you're doing this, you safely discharge the CRT. So these nine pins here are generally the culprit. And if we look really close at these, we can see it does look like there are some cracks in these solder joints. And the reason that these pins are the problem is on the other side is a big old connector which connects the analog board here to the actual motherboard down here. But since these pins are so obvious, it's really easy to just clean them up, 
drop a bit of flux on there and remelt this solder so it makes a connection. So I've got my isopropyl alcohol, which we'll use to clean the pins. I have my soldering iron here and chip quick, smooth flow, no clean tack flux, which will stick flux onto these pins so they will remelt nicely. And then I'm gonna check for any solder bridges. Oh yeah, these look a hundred times better. No bridging. I think we can test this out and see if this repair was successful. Okay, now before we test this, it's worth tempering our expectations a little bit because although this quick fix often solves the chime but no video issue, there's still a million other things that could be wrong. Hey, <laughs> we fixed it. And oh man, this screen actually looks beautiful. All right, let's put this back together and then boot it up and have some fun with it. All right, got some new double-sided tape for our safety cover here. Get the top back on. Okay, so I have my trusty floppy emu here, which is a floppy disk and hard drive emulator that plugs into the floppy port on computers like the Mac Plus. And on this micro SD card, I have a very special disk image. Oh yeah, look at that. Welcome to Sean's Macintosh. Yeah, this disc image is actually from one of the very first videos I ever did on this channel where I had an older Mac Plus that I played some games on and tried to get on the internet. Yeah, here it is on this super sharp crystal clear display on this very lovely Mac Plus. Let's see if this has been upgraded. Oh, it has, look, this has the maximum four megs of RAM. This originally shipped with one meg of RAM. Let's check out some of the games on here. I have everyone's perennial favorite, Shuffle Puck, which is a very impressive game to run on a Mac Plus at eight megahertz with four megs of RAM. Look how good this game is. With the pseudo 3D, and I'm terrible at it. Oh my God. <laughs> we also have one of my favorite games, The Dungeon of Doom, which aside from being the best name for a video game ever, it's a very fun roguelike with a very cool sword pointer mouse. I think that's my favorite part. But let's do a new game. I'll be a knight named Hork onward. And yeah, we just roam around a dungeon, picking up loot, wielding weapons and fighting monsters. Is there any better kind of game than that? Ooh, what is this alligator guy? The Alagog, got him. How about a modern game? We have Flappy Mac by your friend and mine, Gruz, which is a modern implementation of Flappy Bird for the classic Macintosh that even runs on a Mac Plus, although it runs a bit slow on here. But just the fact that it runs and is playable on a Mac Plus is extremely impressive. And man, this game looks good on this crispy display. So here's the thing. I already have a ton of compact Macs, including two other working Mac Pluses. And I don't really need a third one as nice and fully working as this one is now. So I think what I'm gonna do is bring this to VCF East, which is coming up in a few days. And I'm gonna put this in consignment for the very low price that I paid for it. And someone else can have this beautiful, fully working Mac Plus. And to make this a little nicer for the future owner, 
I'm gonna make a bootable System 6 floppy disk based off of my Sean's Macintosh image here so they can just start it up and have some fun. And this floppy disk is a bona fide survivor from my floppy raid, so <laughs> there's that. All right, initialize this as two-sided. And we'll call it shenanigans. And the classic Mac has the easiest operating system install procedure ever. Just drag the system folder to the new disk. All right, we now have a bootable floppy disk. And as this will be my entry into Marchintosh for this year, I'm going to stick this nice Marchintosh sticker on the disk. Oh yeah, look at that. Okay, so as we were testing this, I did notice a few errant screen flickers. So I uh, put on my not very nerdy at all glasses and I went back through the analog board and found a couple other questionable solder joints, which I applied that same process to. Still extremely easy to do and very satisfying when it works. And I can now report that <laughs> we are now booting from floppy Perfectly fine. So if you're gonna be at VCF East and you're looking out for a nice working Mac Plus, take a look in consignment because that's where this will be for fairly inexpensive, just what I paid for it. And if you enjoyed this video and enjoy rescuing old Macs, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more stuff like this, please subscribe down below. And thank you very much for watching. And a special thanks to Graham, Drew Hamlin, James Laurie, George Rosansky, Jesse Azell, Matthew Crowell, April White, James Fryman, Andrew Nicholson, Scott Cedarbaum, Frodo Jedi, Lyle Truid, Unknown Soldier 41, Tom Woodfin, Alex Hoffman, Veronica Explains, Paul Spencer, Control Alt Reese, Ryan, Chris Biggs, Jason Papaz, Scott Thompson, Camel Rakowski, Chris Nelson, Greg from Hot K Mods, Chris Calderon, and Gaspar Heller, who are my highest tiered patrons and all of my Patreon supporters for helping to make these videos possible.